The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Traconitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel reading for the second Sunday of Advent comes from St. Luke. We have been reflecting on the spirit of Advent as joy because God will fulfill His promise. He will restore His broken people. But this joy includes some challenges so that we could fully enjoy this gift of God. In the first reading, we find the vision of the prophet Baruch telling Jerusalem to prepare for the coming home of her sons and daughters that had been exiled in Babylon. God will restore them. God will pave the way for their secure return home. This is an image again of the Savior God who is relentless in His love for His people, who is always hopeful that His people will be saved. This is a cause for joy. And this is the reason why Advent is joyful. We know that God will fulfill His promise in Jesus Christ. He is the way. We will have a way to return to the Father. Now, in the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, we are told that this gift would require a corresponding responsibility on our part. If we want to welcome the saving action of God in Jesus Christ, then first we should advance in love, not only in understanding, but in the practice of love. Secondly, we should put our priorities right. What are the values that really matter in life? And third, a rich harvest of justice. These are the implications for our lives. You want to welcome salvation? Then live salvation now. Love. Set your priorities and be just. These are already the fruits of salvation. And by living according to these manifestations of salvation, we become more uh, welcoming of Jesus, more ready to welcome His salvation. Now this blending of joy and responsibility is very much present in the gospel. The figure presented to us is John the Baptist. And this part of the gospel of St. Luke is very formal. We are set in the context of the time as though Luke is telling us what I will tell you really happened. He even mentioned the civil leaders of the time, the rulers, the tetrarchs, the procurator. He is telling us you can verify historically the moment that I am talking about. And then he even mentioned the chief priests of the time telling us that the coming of the Messiah has both civil and spiritual or religious impact. Now, Advent. Advent will not be complete without the figure of the person chosen by God 
to prepare the coming of the Lord in the first advent, John the Baptist. And in John the Baptist, we see this beautiful blending of the first reading's offer of joy because God will come, and also the offer of the second reading, challenges to people who want to welcome the Savior. First of all, the joy of receiving the grace. According to the Gospel, John the Baptist, the son of Zechariah, was gifted by God, gifted by God with his word in the desert. John the Baptist chose the desert for his dwelling place. Yes, you will say, oh, what a bad choice. <laughs> if you're looking for a house, a dwelling place, you will not go to the desert, wilderness. Oh, very hot, very warm, very dry. Yes, but it is also in the dryness of the desert where your hunger, your thirst for the supreme value, God, all of these are intensified. In the desert, John the Baptist became more open to God. He truly depended on God. He waited for God in the desert, who is his only help. And God came. He spoke his word to John the Baptist. He experienced Advent in the desert. He longed for God. And God came. God's word came to him. My dear brothers and sisters, our lives can be deserts. I'm sure many of us are experiencing different forms of deserts where the water of patience, the water of kindness, the water of perseverance seem to have run dry. And in those desert moments, you are privileged to turn to God and He will come as your water, as your oasis. He will come as His Word and listen to Him. So St. John the Baptist experienced Advent in the desert. The Word of God came to him and he shared that Word to many people. In fact, to the whole region. He preached, he shared the Word that has come to him now. But when the Word of God was transmitted to or through John the Baptist, the word became a challenge. And the challenge comes from Isaiah, whom St. John the Baptist fulfilled. Make ready the way of the Lord. Clear him a straight path. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be leveled. Baruch used the same expression as God's way of preparing a path for the people. Now, St. John is using it in the reverse. We are being asked to level our mountains and to fill up our, our gorges so that the Lord will have a plain path to walk on. It is our share. God will prepare a path for us so that we can reach salvation. Now our share is prepare a path for the Lord in our lives. The excesses, the mountains, the hills in our lives, level them. Especially those who are engaged in excessive pride, excessive corruption. Oh, please level those hills and mountains. And those who, deficiencies that we find in our lives, those deep, deep, uh, deep uh, gorges, fill them up. Those who are lacking in perseverance, those who are lacking in initiative, those who are lacking in love, fill them up so that the Lord will have a, a plain path to walk on as He comes to our lives. It is not enough to be joyful during Advent for the Lord is coming. Let the joy lead us also to the responsibility of preparing a path for the Lord where humility, loving, justice, 
right priorities will make his path straight. I did some volunteer work for the sisters of um, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, missionaries of charity, especially when I was a student abroad. I remember this volunteer, an American woman who volunteered, and close to Christmas, I was surprised that she would still report to the hostel to do volunteer work instead of, you know, just busying him, herself with shopping and all the preparation associated with Advent and Christmas. So I asked her when she would stop, how, what, when would her last day be of volunteering uh, in the hostel, you know? And she said, no, I will come until Christmas Eve. I said, oh, really? I said, why? She said, you know, Father, I'm a rather proud person. I am self-sufficient. I sit on my laurels. And during this time, I need to level the mountains of my pride. And so I come here, and by helping those dying of AIDS, those that are homeless, I bow before them, and I level my mountains. By humble service, I hope to be able to welcome Jesus in my life. What a beautiful way to celebrate Advent. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. In this day and age, social networking has become a very convenient mode of communication among people. With just a click and the power of the internet, you are able to reach your loved ones wherever they are. On the other hand, it is saddening and alarming to know that there are some people who take advantage of the reach and availability of social networking sites, spreading scandals and false information about a certain entity or personality, engaging in fraud and scams, and at times pretending to be someone else. Recently, I have been getting reports that there are fan pages and personal accounts under my name and are circulating over Facebook. To set the record straight, I have no personal Facebook account. Rather, I have only one Facebook page, and it is being maintained by Jesuit Communications. I seek your help in reporting fraudulent pages and accounts, not only those concerned with myself, but also with other people and entities. Let us keep the social networking world a good communication venue by being truthful.